Welcome to our grape coaster project. This is a project that is done with layered um, stencils and these are um, coasters. Obviously this is a little coaster stand. You can take these out and you can trade in different kinds of coasters. We've got squares and rounds and all kinds of shapes for you to do. And these are super easy to do. Um, I painted the whole project using patio paints because they're going to be impervious to water so you can put all kinds of drippy stuff on top of these coasters and not worry about it at all. You can paint the backs and the fronts. You could cut some cork to match. You could put little cork um, dots on them. Um, whichever way you want to go, but they just sit inside here and you could do them in different colors. You could have grapes of all kinds of colors. Um, I've chosen to do them as one unified look. But um, I hope you enjoy the project. It's really fun and it's really easy. Okay, I'm using the palette from my... Let me get my project out here. My blue grapes um, here for my grape coaster set. However, because I'm changing them into the patio paints, I wanted to share how I convert things. So I've got baseball card sleeves here that have paint chips and with the number and the, the name and all that. And I've got them organized by color family. Let me back you out just a little bit here. Okay, and so then I've got some here for my um, patio paints as well. So I've got the patio paints separate. And I've even got um, the um, oops metallics over here. So what you can do... What's neat about this is I'm taking, I went through and pulled the colors that looked pretty much like they were fairly close. And then I'm mixing and I'm holding them up to my swatches of the other color. So by having the swatch that's dried and mixing here, you can easily, like for example, let me show you soft blue, which is a discontinued color now. Um, and I've got these painted on the back of expired business cards or cards that, you know, have somebody moved or whatever. So I've got this light eucalyptus here, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to take Daisy Cream as my toner, and I'll just mix the eucalyptus. And you can see that eucalyptus looks like a family member here, but you can see that it's pretty dark. Okay, but by mixing it with my cream, maybe just a touch more, then you can see I've got just a perfect match. Okay, the neat thing about these coming from DecoArt is that they are made with the same dyes and things like that, so it's going to be really easy to do. So um, that is how you can mix your colors and have a really good hand for what will match. And the other thing you use it for is, like this is a discontinued color now, I can take my card out and I can go holding it up next to other colors and find a color that's very, very close. Like I can see blue mist right here might be um, actually this eucalyptus color which is kind of funny but I could mix it with a little bit of cream and I'd have a match to my color so if you're painting from patterns it's a really good idea um, it doesn't take very long I keep business cards tucked right here in the front of my um, binder um, I also can label other information like if it's transparent or not and then on um, one of the cards here I took Napa red okay and I mix I did it as a wash then I did it with plus black, I did it with plus white, I did it, and then, so I did plus black, that's the color, plus white, and then did a little value scale. And actually you can see that DecoArt uses this as a mother color because this pink is that pink, and then that pink is that pink, and there, oops, someplace here, I think our black plum is plus black. So you can, with one Napa plus white and black, come up with your whole page of colors and not have to buy them all. Um, you know, if you're on a budget, it's a really great way. I like the convenience of having all the bottles and just reaching for the color name, but this is certainly another way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to paint grapes using stencils. These are multi-layer stencils, so you'll have all your different holes cut out, and the goal is that using the patio paints, I'm going to make them look just like these. The neat thing about patio paints is there's only about, I don't know, 50 or so colors um, in the whole line. That means that we don't have as many color choices, so I've had to mix. But because they're made by the same company, DecoArt, um, that means that they're going to be very compatible. So I've come up with mixes using the line um, that are just exactly like these colors here. Okay, so the reason that I am using patio paints is when you listen to the description on the bottle for painting coasters, 
um, weather and water resistant. Okay, so the one thing that we will be putting on top of our coaster is um, water. So we want something that's going to be water resistant. We don't want to leave any tomfoolery. The other thing that we've done is we've used cork sealer to seal the, um, the, the, the coasters on all the sides. And what that does for us, if you look at the label on, let's see, on here, cork sealer is what duck decoy carvers use for their duck decoys. And duck decoys, when they're using them, float in the water. Um, you apply um, several coats, the allow to dry, um, allow to cure for 48 hours before submerging into water. So the first line of defense is we're going to seal it with something that can soak in water. Second line of defense is we're going to use paints that are designed to be weather and water resistant. So that's why we're using the patio paints, and they are safe for wood and um, tin and all that kind of stuff. This is also a neat line that you would use to, um, to for your birdhouses and things like that. Okay, so the first step that we're going to do is we're going to highlight. We're going to use Crescent stencil brushes. Okay, and we're just going to... We have our little grapes, a lovely highlight, and that's about as easy as it gets, right? And I'm going to keep the stencil um, in place here, and I'll go ahead and just make that highlight kind of big. Let that dry, then we're going to repeat with our dirty brush into our soft lilac mix. Oops. And we'll repeat. Whenever you're doing repeats, you want to um, not go out as far as the first level. So the first level is big, second level is littler, third level is smaller, so you're graduating the color in. Okay, and then we'll go into our first shadow, which is the Deep Midnight Mix. Okay, we'll go ahead and shade over here at the bottom. Let's see which way is our coaster. Our coaster is going to go this way, so we'll make the weight be. I think I'm doing that backwards. We'll make it be over this way. I have to move that tape. The tack it over and over that I usually use as my repositionable adhesive has been reformulated and is no longer good for paints because it's dragging the paint off um, with the so we don't get to use that anymore I haven't found a replacement for it yet okay, I'm going to repeat on that shadow And then we repeat one more time with Payne's Gray. Uh, looks like I dipped into some other kind of color. And now we'll bring that down in that very lower edge there. take a peek. So now it looks like we have three little floating grapes. Isn't that kind of fun? Okay, so I could, in theory, bring my lights up a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to wait and see, because I can always go backwards and I can redo the steps. And I actually missed a step. We need to go with some grape juice. <clears throat> We're going to go with the, ooh, not so dry. you got to really dry that off, otherwise you end up just base coating. And we're going to go into the highlight color with the grape juice to tint that just a little bit more purple. I 
And like I said before, we can increase um, different colors as we go. Okay, for ones that um, have grapes underneath them, we need to mask out that grape. So you line up your little stencil, and then we basically scumble over to base coat over the top of that grape. And that way we can start over. And we'll just hit the blow dryer. All right, then we're going to go back over the top. And we're going to highlight towards the top with our wild orchid mix. So this is using a stencil as a screen and not as a stencil. It's kind of a little bit both. Okay, gotta make sure those things are dry. It's not dry, then you'll dig a little hole. This looks like I have too much paint left in my brush. Now we'll go into, so it's our next step, grape juice. grape juice so that it goes over some of that highlight color. We'll go into our shading. Oops. And I dismantled everything. Our weight on the bottom here where it's going to be sitting and you can give a little bit over the top. It's the easiest way to float I bet you've ever seen. You can really achieve quite a bit with these dry rubs. I'm going to go into Payne's Gray. Now we're getting grape layers. Okay, next we'll go in and highlight. We're going to switch to our blue color, so we're going to do the country blue mix. Make sure we get our highlights on the right side. Okay, then we're going to repeat as long as, eh, as long as we're not wet with the soft blue. It's really just layering these um, colors over and over through the stencil. It makes it super easy. Anybody can paint a grape. And I've got to say, I've painted grapes for a long time, but I cannot believe how awesome they come out using a stencil and how much easier they are than trying to decide where to float the color and, you know, all that kind of jazz. I've got my brushes in a little plastic bag. Paint doesn't dry if it's not exposed to air. So I don't have, well, I've got, I've got many of these brushes, but most of us don't have as many as I do. So 
if you keep the, the brushes fresh, then you don't have to wash them. Um, you can also use hand sanitizer to get the color out if you need to, and it dries real quick. Okay, then we go into our Deep Midnight. This time we don't need the purple because we don't want to make that one look purple. So we're going to go Deep Midnight Blue. Bring it around. A good time to bring it up over that color is after you've been rubbing at the edge just a little bit. I can push this up just a touch. Time to use it at the edge is when your paint is really strong in your brush. Do the top last and then go back and bring it up into your grape just a titch. You see how that's looking? Isn't that cool? Okay, now we repeat with Payne's Gray. Notice how I always push straight down on the stencil when I'm sitting my hands down. That prevents um, shifting. Kind of like you anchor it first and then you can hold on to it. And then I lift off really gradually as well. Okay, let's take a little peek. I think I can go just, I just slid the thing. Just a hair darker. Now we can go back through if we want to, and we could float just a little bit, but if I can get most of it done with stencils, I think that's the way to go. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore floating, but sometimes there are things that I like to do um, a little bit better. And so I'm so intrigued to see where we end up because we've got one layer left and, and it's just fascinating to me. And these are written across the bottom to tell you which steps they are. Okay, just one and then we've got leaves to do as well. You could do multiple colors if you wanted to. Getting a little bit of glare today. And that one's a repeat, okay. Okay, so I need to get that masked. Okay, and the last layers are done with a blue. cute. Okay, and then we're going to repeat with soft blue. And then we're Payne's Gray and Midnight. That's pretty consistent. When you're masking like this and using stencils, it's kind of fun to peek and see how things are developing because it's like it's a secret or something. We've got little paint savers on the website that um, are liquid proof so they don't spill out and will hold your paints and keep them fresh for a really long time. Like I said, paint doesn't dry unless it's exposed to air. So if you want to save these colors as a mix and you'll have a mixed for the next time you need conversion things. This um, project I think would look really cute on a stepping stone. 
as well. I can think of lots of applications and places I'd want to put grapes. And don't forget, um, when I did the grapes, I did them in many colors. I did red and I did blue and green. And I've got them all stacked up here with my posters. There's the green ones. Um, and then red is around here someplace. I'll find it. Yep, stacked under things. An artist table is always messy. There's the red ones. So you can do these in any of the colors because the stencils, of course, convert. Okay, we're going to do a little teeny bit of floating. We're going to shade under the grapes with Payne's Gray. Okay, so this is my downward area. And I want to blend it out just a little bit more. A little too concentrated right there. Color is such an amazing thing. Right up next to your edge. And fade out. Okay, and that's just going to add that illusion of depth. Okay, on a couple of the, I guess we'll call them the more important ones, we can go in and we can deepen our shading on the grape itself where desired. Okay, depends on where you want to go with that. The greens are just a little bit easier to mix. And by using a common mixing color, both in the wrought iron and in the um, daisy cream, then that gives us families because if you use the same color to mix into all your other colors, then it makes all of your paints have the same DNA, if, if you will. Okay, so I'm looking for my celery green chip. This is where these come in so handy. Okay, so I can see that I've gone just a little bit too light, so I'll go ahead and scoop in. I should have got my chip out and had it where I could see it when I was mixing. Okay, so see how that's just a wonderful mix. Alright, we're going to start with our shading. So we'll go into our, I don't have any idea what color this is, the plantation pine, and the avocado. And then what we'll do is we'll go next to our edge and we'll create some darks that crawl into the middle. And we're hoping for a little bit of kind of like roundness, so it'll look like it's coming around from the back side. Okay, in the meantime, we'll go into our lighter color. And start dragging that towards the dark side. Sometimes I feel so wasteful wiping off of the paint, but this technique is just so stinking easy. And then as you apply more, just apply it less and less um, down towards the edge of the leaf. And we'll go into our darker green, plantation pine. And base coat. We don't want to do that. So I'll lift up on my pressure just a little bit. I definitely don't want to be base coating. Okay, so we're at so far. And 
make that little tendril down there darker. I think that might be about enough. We'll add a little bit of detail as well. Now I'll base this top leaf. All right, so we'll go into our um, avocado mix. Keeping the name straight without names is hard. We'll get it though. And we'll do the middle area of the leaf, drawing it into each of the little arms of the leaves. Much easier to get a little fade that way. Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll go into our highlight. Which we'll bring in from the tips. And kind of surround the little stuff that's coming into the arms. Whoops, that's my base coat brush. I'm going to take a peek to see if we like what's going on, and I think I want to bring my highlights up just a little bit. The neat thing is, is you can go back and forth until you strike the balance that you like. And once we put in our accent colors and all that kind of stuff, it won't, it won't seem as important. Okay. So we can see already that we're going to need, I'm going to put my brushes in the baggie. We need a couple supporting floats of color because with this leaf over this leaf, we want to make sure that we have a little bit of dark down there. So I'll go into the avocado, just that little bit of water. Just kind of walk that out and up. Now what you could also do is go backwards one step and go shade a little bit more on your leaf. Um, and bring that dark down. So that's a really easy way to do that. Okay. I think let's go ahead and give it some of its um, some of its veins. Let me get out a Raphael brush and soak it in some water. Okay, we're going to go into our Payne's Gray mix, and we're going to shade. Remember, no, don't use a whole lot of water with this um, patio paints. I'm going to shade under the leaf. And that's a little bit stark. So let me get out a little mop if I can find one. Here, a teeny little blending mop. Just pull it out just a little bit at the edge. Okay, yeah, like that. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our veins. I'm going to have our veins kind of curl with our leaf. Probably gonna have to go back and doctor those just a little bit darker. You can decide how many extra little side tendrils you want to have. 
neat thing about this Raphael brush is it does the finest, finest tipped um, lines. Now we'll go into the darker green. So I'm into uh, celery and then light avocado. We'll bring those down into this. I can get it a little bit lighter down here. Oops. Even more hot if we wipe that off. Oh, ha ha! So that's what spit's for, right? Okay. Never panic, always stay calm. It's when we panic and let things dry that the disasters happen. Okay, I can't see this one. This guy's looking a little lonely. Not bad for frickin' stenciled grapes, huh? And look how cute this is gonna look inside. Let me rinse my brush. The neat thing about these Raphael brushes, um, I have never used soap on any of my Raphaels. I've never used brush cleaner. Something about the natural hair makes it so that the paint just falls out. I never get a whole bunch of gunk trapped, and I always load all the way up to my ferrule. So they're just, whatever it works about them, they're amazing. Amazing. One brush will last you at least 20, 30 years, unless you do something silly to it. So let's see how this is going to look. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so this is a little pop-top device that will take the plastic off your project as well as usually it will chip it so you can rip it right off. Makes opening bottles much easier. And I've painted mine. Um, you just use a little paint adhesion medium and it'll stick to the plastic and then you can give them as gifts too for other painters. All right, we're gonna take just a little bit of our, let's see, Coastal Surf and Desert Turquoise and just make a little mix. I'm in my green brush, um, so I'm gonna put just a little hint of this green on the tips of my leaves. And that's just going to add a lovely, 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 lovely little jazz to that. Okay, and I think we'll add just a little bit into our um, grapes as well. And I'll get my other stencil and do the same thing to the tip highlights of those. Just a little kiss here and there. Make sure you're all lined up. Yeah, that just really punches it, doesn't it? Look at the difference. Much better with a little bit of tur um, turquoise. All right, we're gonna add just a little bit of sparkle to with your warm white, the real warm white. So we're going to add the sparkle on this sides where they apply and then we'll add just a teeny bit of a, a little bit of a highlight at the bottoms. Okay, well for our final little highlights, we'll just take a little bit of our teals and we'll just spread some of that little teal magic. on a couple of our grapes. And I probably don't need my mask to do this. You could spatter if you wanted to. Need a little bit more jazz. You can go back in. So the final touch, I like the idea of masking my leaves though. So. All right, 